you, it's your girl TC, aka not your average career coach who you wish was your teacher at school. Alright! I'm not your average girl. Hey, not your average girl. Hey, I'm not your average girl. Welcome back, Team NYAG Squad. And if you're new to the family, then thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be kept alert of when I drop new videos. And of course, I haven't been as consistent lately, but trust me, I'm coming with the sauce. Welcome to my TV Development 101 series. I'll be giving you an introduction to the world of TV development, the main area of TV that I've worked in for the last six years. So for those of you who don't know, my current job role is a development assistant producer. So I'm in the mid-level position in my career and I work in unscripted TV. Unscripted TV literally just means non-fiction television and covers the following genres, entertainment, factual, factual entertainment, news, sport, it also covers various subjects within these genres such as religion, natural history, music, dating, interior design, etc, etc. And it goes across prime time, daytime and children's TV. So in TV development, we're the team who come up with, develop and pitch ideas for TV shows and digital content to commissioners. So we basically get paid to make things up and it's great. Okay, now there's obviously a lot more to the process than that but we're keeping it basic today. In terms of who works in TV development, most development teams I've worked in, there's usually a development researcher, a development assistant producer, a development producer, and a head of development. And sometimes you can get development executives who are above development producers, and a director of development who is above the head of development. I'm not gonna go into a breakdown of each role in this particular video, but in terms of my role specifically, I don't know if I said that correctly, in 2016, I started out in TV development in an entry level role as a runner, and that was working at BBC Children's in their CBBC unscripted development team. Then in 2017, I became a researcher and continued a career in TV development as a development researcher at BBC Three from 2018 to 2021. Then in 2021, I then was headhunted for my first development assistant producer role and I will soon be taking on my third job in this role. Most of the time there is a distinct difference between what is expected and required from you in each role but for me personally there was a lot of crossover from my previous role as a development researcher. For example at BBC3 I won the Birmingham team's first in-house commission and I got to pitch the idea that I developed to the commissioner at the time. Development researchers don't usually sit in commissioning meetings and they rarely ever get to pitch their own ideas however I was fortunate enough to have these types of opportunities and ended up pitching and winning four commissions during my time there. In my role as a development assistant producer or development AP for short I come up with and develop my own original ideas, I work to briefs set by various broadcasters, this can include the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Sky Art, Channel 5, Netflix, Disney etc 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 as well as developing other people's ideas in the team. Lots and lots and lots of writing, pitch decks, treatments, one pages, developing good talent relationships, so regularly meeting with and developing ideas around big talent is very key. I also edit, so casting tapes, sizzle reels, pitch decks and treatment using um, editing software such as Adobe Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Also, please do not worry if there is a lot of jargon in there that you don't understand. I will hopefully get around to breaking down these terms in another video. No one day is ever the same in TV development. It can be lots of fun, but it also can be very intense and high pressure. It's a never ending beast of a machine. You're churning out lots of ideas and going back to the drawing board until you've done enough to convince people that they have potential. And then there's the risk that the idea may never get commissioned. You put all this hard work into developing the idea, finding the talent and putting together and creating all your pitch materials and it still may get rejected. But if that doesn't put you off, it really is a great way to learn and understand the process of conceptualising an idea for a TV show that hopefully makes it to screen for hundreds of thousands and millions of viewers. Working in TV development is so much more than just coming up with a good idea. You have to ask yourself, how creative can you be in expressing that new idea? Justifying why it needs to be made now. Can you back it up with facts, stats and figures? 
Can you sum your idea up in a clear, concise and punchy sentence? Can you take constructive feedback and be willing to adapt ideas? Do you have a broad knowledge of unscripted TV, the trends and interesting subject areas? Are you a good communicator? Do you know how to win people over and take a genuine interest in different people and their skills? If you answered yes to every question, then this is probably the career for you. Feel free to leave your comments and questions below and thank you so much for joining me for part one of the TV Development 101 series. <laughs> Remember to like this video, subscribe and share, stay blessed and keep it not your average.